Good morning, everybody. We have a pretty jam-packed agenda today. I have a couple updates first. Um, but we're going to have uh, Jeff Dickerson come up. He's the Director of Administrative Services. He worked with a, a group of four residents on a presentation about security here at Freedom Plaza. So I think they're going to enjoy that. I've heard it's a really great presentation. Um, after that, Dennis is going to give us a financial update. And then Therese is going to provide a few updates from dining. Uh, but wanted to announce the Employees of the Month. Um, I know everybody likes to hear who they are. So for independent living, uh, Bob, Robert Jensen, the EMT, is our uh, Employee of the Month. We love Robert. Uh, for assisted living in the Arbors, uh, the winner is Alma Rios. She is a housekeeper, and I don't know um, if any of you have had loved ones at the Arbors or have uh, spent time down there. She's been the housekeeper in memory care for several years, and she wears many hats. Her title may be housekeeper, but she's caregiver. Uh, she does pretty much anything we need her to do, and she does it while she's smiling the whole way. So really happy for her as well. And Plaza West, the winner is Melissa Chavez, and she is an office assistant. So congratulations to those employees who get a, a 400 extraordinary reward points, which is the equivalent of $100 to spend in the online store. Um, Sibby is not able to be here today. He's meeting with the new project manager for the renovation of assisted living and memory care. Uh, but I will tell you, I came into my office this morning to several large boxes that were the equipment for the GBT Wi-Fi project that we're getting started. So. Um, Cash graciously came and got those out of my office, so we're getting ready to do all the infrastructure to get the Wi-Fi to all the GBT buildings. Uh, also, uh, we are getting ready, and I don't know if I mentioned this before, but we are getting ready to do a renovation of the sales office. So um, we're waiting on a bid for some furniture for that, and then once we have that, um, we'll submit that for approval from Health Peak and get that project started. So just giving the, the sales office a renovation, we want that to look nice and fresh for all the prospects coming in. And that will be in advance of what we hope is a, a full renovation of this building um, in 2024. Um, the last thing I'm gonna mention, I know in the memo last week, I announced that I'm gonna be having dinner with or lunch with residents over the next three months, put several dates out there. And today was the first day that you could make a reservation I must be pretty popular. <laughs> Stephanie's already received several calls and emails, so just to let you know if that fills up pretty quickly, I'm gonna continue to offer more dates um, throughout the rest of the year and, and maybe just in perpetuity. So that's not something that's gonna be just for the next few months, but um, looking forward to that over the next three months to get that started. So with that, I'm gonna call Jeff up. He's gonna give uh, one or two transportation updates, and then we'll get this presentation started on security. Good morning, everyone. How's everybody doing? Um, so just a quick update with transportation. Um, so to improve upon some of the services that we provide for transportation, um, Vanessa, she was working feverishly to come up with some new ideas of how we can actually add on to some of the things that we're doing now as far as providing transportation. So she came up with a flyer. We did, we did add a couple of extra companies onto that that also provide transportation in the event that we cannot accommodate um, transportation. We're always trying to brainstorm in there to better improve transportation for the residents here at Freedom Plaza. So she came up with a nice little flyer that they're in the transportation office. So if you get an opportunity to stop by there, um, go ahead and grab one. And uh, it, it has a couple of um, other vendors that we've reached out to over the last month or so um, that also provide transportation services. Like we added another person, another vendor to the airport transportation. He came out like uh, about a week ago. Um, I looked at some of his vehicles. They're really nice. They provide uh, excellent service. And um, we just wanted to partner with some other companies out there to try to improve transportation. So if you get an opportunity to stop by a transportation office, go ahead and grab one of those flyers and it has all the information on there. 
Okay. Um, secondly, um, Angie and I, I'm always picking our brain all the time and, you know, stopping by our office to ask some questions and stuff. So, you know, we were in the office one day talking about some security stuff and she was like, why don't you put together like a, kind of like a task force, so to speak, right? And uh, she's like, you know, pick some individuals out here at the community and we have some brainstorming sessions to come up with some ideas of how we can better improve and bring information to the residents here. So, um, Dennis Brady, uh, Tim Broad and Larry Chambers, uh, you know, they have like a military background, so I thought they could bring a lot of insight onto how we can improve um, on some things here. And also Carol O'Brien, right? She's our Administrative Services Committee uh, chairperson. And if you don't know Carol, she's very actively involved in everything here at Freedom Plaza, right? Um, she's a pleasure to have on the Administrative Services Committee. She's always out and about, involved. She's bringing stuff to my attention. She's like my eyes and ears, right? So I can just sit in the office all day and not do anything because I know Carol's going to bring everything to my attention. I'm just joking. But um, she's been wonderful though, right? So it's been a pleasure to, to continue to work with her and stuff like that. So we comprised this, this little task force together and um, we had some brainstorming sessions. Our first session, Dan Wicker, who is our regional safety manager, he came down from uh, corporate and he said it on our meetings. We had Deputy Mary, which he could not be here. He had to attend our funeral service today. He could not be here. Um, he said it on some of our, on our task force meetings and um, gave us some great insight, some great ideas. We got some great insight and ideas from Dan Wicker as well. And we, like I said, we had some brainstorming sessions. We put some stuff together. So Tim Broad is going to be able to present that information to you guys. And at the end, if you have any questions, I'll be happy, more than happy to answer your questions, okay? So at this time, I'd like to introduce Mr. Broad. Come on up. We thought he'd be the best speaker because I love to hear him talk. I love his voice. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, what were we tasked to do? Good question. <laughs> to review the security systems in place at Freedom Plaza. And that is something which very few people seem to understand what we were doing about it here. And to review the understanding of residents with respect to what is happening with security and to recommend what can be done to improve residents' confidence in that system and to offer some recommendations Oops. of what how we can improve our own security as Jeff has said they put together a task force which worked well together in finding out what was in place and what could be done and what needed to be done. Security is what residents need to feel safe, but not impinging on your freedom to do activities. So your personal liberty is just as important as your security. Freedom Plaza wants their residents and their guests to feel welcome and to have freedom of actions here. Security is a two-way street. Security personnel set out guidance and residents should really follow such guidance. is usually given in newsletters. Stephanie sends them out on a regular basis. Please try and read them. And if you've got questions, come back and ask what you need to know. Sadly, trust is no longer a feature of modern society. 
Most of us grew up where you didn't shut your front door, you left your car open, the keys in it. Unfortunately, today, that no longer is a reality. And we all need to realize it is our job to look after our stuff, not the responsibility of your friends, your neighbors, or the management here. You look after your own stuff. We have in place security of the Plaza building. There's 24 7 security cameras at all the entrances, and Kaaba key cards are required to enter all of the outside entrances, and the same key cards, not the same, but the same shape and to, you get to open your own apartment. You all have a Freedom Plaza badge. And visitor badges, if you're living here in, in the plaza, you get, if you have a visitor, you know that when they come in, they're supposed to sign in at the front desk and wear their visitor's badge. Call boxes are now installed at hours two and five, which allow residents to allow remote security access. GBT is very similar. Cameras at all the main entrances. Again, key cards open the outside entrances and they all need you need that to get into your own apartment and the residence call system from the apartment can unlock the door if you can work out how to do it <laughs> all residents again have freedom plaza badges but you need to note key cards are specific for each resident's apartment and will also unlock the outside doors where the apartment where your apartment is located it doesn't unlock outside doors of other places where you don't live please note that all employees here all the staff have had background checks so that we are pretty sure that we're dealing with straightforward people here. The most important thing to recognize is that each key is unique to whoever it is issued to. If it's a couple that have a, 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 an a apartment, they each have their own key card. It's identical for that person. Under the system here, it will log who opened the door to get into that apartment. So if you have another key, uh, someone else comes in, the system says, ah, that was opened by this key. And that is a very good security system. How is it managed here at Freedom Plaza? Jeff Dickerson, as Angie told you, is responsible for security here. Whoops. Security officers report any issues to the front desk and everything that is in there is logged in. The security people are here 24 seven and can be are available via the front desk. Please note that if you get 15 calls at once, we do not have 15 indiv individuals chasing around the security. It's a tether on a priority order basis. All security officers have been trained 
and have procedures to follow. And the front desk supervisor is the one responsible to initiate any action if it is deemed necessary. What to do in an emergency? If it's in a real emergency, as far as security, someone you don't like or you're worried or is threatening you, call 911. If the uh, front desk call 911, if such a situation is reported by one of the security guards. This is important to know that if you have a real emergency, you call 911 direct because the sheriff's office, if you're still dealing with the sheriff, wants to deal with the person directly, not with the third party. So that's why that is done that way. For reporting a security concern that may be a worry but not scaring you, who do you call? It's the front desk. What does the security officer say if he sees anything going wrong? He tells the front desk. Who decides what to do at that time? Again, the front desk. How are actions initiated? Through the front desk. So it's one source of information all the time, but centralized and it's logged in. How is it logged? It's logged by the front desk. Video cameras. Video cameras are on 24-7. Records are kept on DVRs which are located at various locations around the campus. And they stay around for about two, up to two months. And then they're overdrawn by further cap, uh, pictures. A big question is what happens about open garage doors, particularly for those living in GBT. As you know, if a garage door is open, the back, the inside door allows access into the main building each time. And therefore, one should always remember to cut the door. If the door is spotted by a security guard, he will alert the front desk and, and they, if the garage door is open. The front desk will alert the resident. Observations. We have the best security in this place of any of the LCS properties. That is from their director of security uh, when he came to see what we had here. This is substantiated because they have audit checklists which are carried out by the security team here and it all follows good operating practice. Surveillance cameras are in place and they operate and we can go back. There is nobody watching those screens all the time. They, it is not feasible or practical to do that. It's just if anyone has a problem at any time, you say, well, when was it? And you can look up the cameras that happen to be covering that area at that time. And that is about as good as you're probably ever gonna get anywhere. Electronic locks and unique key cards have excellent tracking 
of who owns which store and when it was opened. So if you feel someone's been in your apartment without your knowledge, you can go and talk to the security at the front desk and they can check who opened your door. It may well be that you were the one who opened that door and you've forgotten that you'd actually moved something before you left the apartment in the first place. You're asked to wear your name badge. I see most of you have all your name badges on. That's great. But it is useful because if someone's wearing a name badge, that at least shows they're a resident here. And if you're not wearing a name badge, what the devil are you doing here in the first place? If you're not wearing a name badge or a visitor's pass, it's a good guide for keeping others around to know that you are a bona fide person to be here. <coughs> Please ensure that your guests, when they, uh, uh, when you're living in the plaza, you have guests. Please make sure they check in at the front desk and get these visitors badges. As usual, GBT are the rebels around, they don't have a front desk. But we do ask that all GBT people, when they take their visitors over to the plaza, please check in at the front desk, because then they can be recognised. The security level at Freedom Plaza was the finding of the team that was put together reflects welcome to our home for our residents but has sufficient visibility to deter those who may seek to do harm to us. To see and be seen is important. People, if they're going to commit crime, do not like to be watched. They don't like someone on, with their eyes open looking for them. And that deters an awful lot of people. Finally, when practical, please wear your name badges when on campus. You don't have to pin it on when you're swimming in the pool. Please, if you're leaving your apartment, shut the door behind you. But a lot of cases it's recognized that people may be in bed or whatever. They may like to have their door open so they don't have to get out of bed if they get a visitor or whatever. Fully appreciate all that. And it's your judgment call because your safety is your responsibility. Uh, in GBT, please, pretty please, please keep the garage doors shut. In all cases, lock up your vegetables, your valuables, not only the vegetables. <laughs> Lock up your ba ba valuables and keep them in a safe place which both of you in the apartment know where it is because sometimes people forget. So it's good to have both of you at least knowing where your secure hiding place is. When out going, leaving here, a lot of you go visiting into some city and, and around, please do not leave your car or your golf cart with the keys in it or even unlocked. That's a, a major problem. I'm talking with Jeff Murray. If people learned to lock their doors, lock their cars, 
and not leave checkbooks and credit cards in golf carts when they go shopping. Crime in some city would reduce by 85%. So that is where most of the crime occurs, is by casual crime coming in, seeing a window of opportunity where they see an unlocked door. Store golf carts in the golf cart parking area. But there are things to remember. It's important to look, every golf cart key opens any other golf cart. So you don't need a special key unless you rekey it. If you rekey it, it might cost you anywhere from 50 to 100 dollars but it's a lot less than a new golf cart if it gets stolen. Do not leave the key in the golf cart. Uh, it's not a good idea. Register each of your carts at the Sun City Centre Security Patrol because we give you a unique number that goes on that golf cart. When a, go a golf cart may be taken from any place, a parking lot anywhere, disappears, goes for a joyride, particularly during holiday season where young kids are around and they think it's fun to whip off and go for a spin. They will then drive around until the thing runs out of juice and they'll just leave it there. Probably with the keys still in it. But if the sheriff comes across it or there's complaints of a parked car, park golf car, what happens is the sheriff comes along. If he sees the number, he contacts the owner because if you register the golf car, he has the database of who owns every golf car and what their contact details are. If you don't register it and it gets stolen and gets parked off somewhere in Sun City, it then gets towed to the, uh, the lot down on the 301 where you pay and if you want your golf cart back you have to pay to have it towed back you have to pay the storage in the pound facility and then you have to pay to get it towed there in the first place so it ends up costing you $400, $500 that's not a good idea and it doesn't cost you anything to come to the security patrol and register your golf cart. When we sell tickets for our golf cart raffle, uh, we'll also be re-registering if you want to come along and register your golf cart if it is not already registered when we're here to sell tickets. We ask residents, please do your part. Follow the guidelines. Follow the recommendations that are given to us. And security will do their part and keep us all as safe as we possibly can be. Final slide. Thank you. I hope you found this of use and of interest. If anyone has any questions, happy to answer them. Thank you. Yes. The question was about what is a security officer and the term that's used to describe that person that is a security officer, right? So um, I think more or less, like back in the day, it used to be called security guards, right? And that over time changed to a security officer, right? Because like re responsibilities increase and stuff like that. But whether you're a security guard or a security officer, the primary responsibility is to observe and report, right? 
Um, these, my employees that are security officers, they do not carry weapons, firearms, mace, pepper spray, any of that stuff they don't carry, right? Um, so their number one primary responsibility is to observe and report, observe and report things, right? Which uh, Tim brought up, they report it to the front desk. So that's their primary responsibility. We have a tram driver, which is a security officer, but he, you know, his second responsibility is also the tram driver taking people back and forth. But that is a security officer, because you'll see security on the top of the vehicle and stuff like that, right? But their, his primary responsibility is, while he's taking residents back and forth on campus, he has his neck on a swivel, and he's looking out for things too, right? So in between that time that he's not transporting people back and forth, he's driving around campus, right, around the back of the building, um, the parking lot, golf cart parking, over there by the garden, uh, behind Plaza West, over at GBT, Homewood, and Memory Care over there, right? He's patrolling all these places when he gets some free time to do that. How do we know who the security officers are? Um, are they, is it on their badge? How okay, do we know? that's a good question. So in our audit checklist for security, right, they are supposed to be distinguishable from the other employees here on campus. So they wear the black ball cap that says security on top, and they also should have a badge on, a security officer badge on, right? And they are driving around in vehicle number 30, which is the Ford Transit, and they have the big white uh, graphics on the front that says security. So that's how, and it, it's distinguishable from the rest of the uh, transits that I have here on campus because we have the security in the front windshield. So it's visible to everybody, right? Even my golf cart, I got security put on there. So that's kind of a deterrent too, right? And it, it does help, even with me putting security on my golf cart, a lot of times when I'm driving around, people are more apt to stop at the stop signs and do the right thing because they see that. I'm, I'm serious, it, it, it helps a lot, right? Visibility. Yes, uh, as far as security, what are the hours that they run? 24 hours a day. So the security officer in the vehicle, they start at 7 a.m. all the way till 10 p.m. They're out driving around. The front desk is made 24 hours a day. The reason I ask because those who live in GDT who have little dogs, sometimes they don't think they'll get done until 11. And I'm just wondering if you could extend that uh, to GDT because uh, we're concerned that if you've heard anybody extending the dog, of course we wear a badge and a button, but uh, that may not always work for what we need to have done with, when you're having a, another animal. So if you could extend that, it would be helpful. So the security officer slash tram driver starts at 7 a.m. to 10 p.m., but when he leaves, when they leave, that individual leaves, the front desk assumes responsibility of the security vehicle. So the expectation is the security officers that work at the front desk, they do their checks throughout the building, right? They go to each floor. Them and the EMT are responsible for doing the, the B and C and the D and E sides of the building, right? They go to each floor. There's a checklist that they sign off on. So in between those times that the security officer is not doing the checks within this building, they hop in the security officer vehicle and they drive around campus to do their checks. During that 10 to 11? No, no. Um, all, all night. So the security officers that work 24 hours at the front desk, they, they, they maintain custody of the security vehicle after 10 p.m. If somebody's on watch out on the campus. Yes, sir. The expectation is, barring there's not an emergency, is that they hop in that vehicle maybe every hour or so and they drive around campus to do security checks on campus. Right. And they log that in the, uh, the security also logbook. Any more questions? Are those the same people that initial the uh, sheets in the storage slash trash rooms in this building? Yes, sir. Any more questions? Yes, Barry. <laughs> yes, sir, we can. Um, Barry asked, will there be copies of the presentation today that um, Tim did? And the answer is yes. Stephanie will get some copies out of the front desk. So if anybody wants to stop by and get one, it'll be available. Steph, Stephanie's asked, Barry. Yes, Carol. 
Jeff, I just want to tell you, today I had to move my car around and take pictures of it, and the security guard drove around the new gentleman that you hired and made sure I was okay. Wanted to know if I needed help. I really appreciate that. Yes. So we, we, we uh, I recently hired another security officer, right? His name is Sohan. Um, he's wonderful. Um, a lot of you guys probably seen him drive the tram sometimes in the morning and in the evening time. He has been a welcome added addition to the security team here. He actually moons like a security officer. He was, he's a security officer before I hired him here, and he still does that part-time out in town. But he has a lot of security officer training. He's very good with the residents here, and um, he's been a great addition to the team. Yes. Do the security officers ride constantly between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. thinking about the hours which are most vulnerable to vandals and thieves? Yes, sir. Barring there's no act, barring there's no emergency here, sometimes throughout the night we have medical emergency here, and it's only the EMT here and the security officer at the front desk. So, of course, the, if the EMT gets called away to a resident's apartment, then the security officer has to stay at the front desk to wait for emergency services to show up, whether it's fire and rescue or the squad to show up and have a profile sheet printed out on that resident to give to fire and rescue. So in that event, they are not able to go do their rounds at that specific time until that emergency is over. There could be flooding here. There could be extenuating circumstances that will not cause that will cause them not to be able to do their rounds at that particular time. I have no problems, and I am wanting to <clears throat> brag a little bit. Uh, shortly after my husband passed away nine years ago. I was alone in GDT for almost a whole year, the only resident on the second floor in that building, and I never felt as safe and secure as I did then. I'm, I'm glad to feel that way. We love you, okay? You have video cameras and surveillance cameras. Where are the video cameras that are monitored located and the surveillance cameras that are not monitored regularly located? Well, you know, just know that they're throughout the campus. We want to go around yeah. letting everybody know where the cameras are, right? But they're located, and listen, trust me, we have a lot of them, right? They're over at GBT, they're over at the Plaza Club. Um, we're in the, pro we have plenty of those here, the parking lots, um, inside the building, at each door of each building, um, doors two and five, where the Bombay parking is, we have cameras there. And uh, we're in the process of also getting those installed at um, Plaza West and over at Homewood and Memory Care. But we do have a lot of cameras, okay? Yes, Ms. Tom. Are there video or security cameras on every floor wing? Like no, ma'am, not at this time. Okay, thank you. Is that it? Okay, one more. One more. My concern is that the doors at GBD, it takes a long time to close. There could be somebody lurking, watching, somebody coming in late. Yes, ma'am. After the approach of the or whatever. So why is it so long? Well, it's for um, safety reasons, right? Um, the door, they have a timer set on them for when they, how, how long it takes them to close because we might have someone who's handicapped or doesn't have the ability to move very fast and the doors give them enough time to be able to maneuver through it, to come through it and the door closes, just like the elevators, right? You know that sometimes like, you're like looking at your clock thinking like, man, when is this elevator door gonna close? And that's for, that's for like safety purposes, and it gives that person enough time, because we do have some handicapped residents here, and it gives them that time to get through that door before it closes on them. Yes, ma'am. Uh, if, you, if you observe, when, you, when the door automatically opens in GBT and it's gonna close, if you really are concerned, just linger, stand there, whether it's inside or out, until you see it coming close. 
and then you'll feel secure and closed and nobody got in besides you. Thank you for that argument. You look lovely as ever. <laughs> no more questions? We done? Okay, once again, I want to... Oh, one more. Oh, my God. Last one. Last one, last one. This is a silly one. Uh, are they ever going to open the other two gates of the golf cart area? There's no such thing as silly questions, only silly answers, okay? Um, I think we're just going to roll with what we've been doing. I think that's been working out pretty well. I know it's an inconvenience, but the less gates that are open, it's controlled. Um, the less ways out of there, it might deter people from going in there. But we are, I am working with city to try to better access to that area. I know one of the things we talked about is putting a, a, like an electric door opener on the main gate so it stays closed all the time so people can like hit a remote or a code or something and open that gate and it slide open so we don't have, we're not leaving it open all the time. But as of now, we're just gonna leave that closed until we can come up with some, with some more ideas, okay? So in closing, I just wanna say thank you to, to Tim, um, Carol, and uh, Larry Chambers and Dennis for, um, they, they really drove this whole thing, the task force and stuff. I only facilitated, I just sat there and listened to them, but they brought some great insight. They did a great presentation and let's give them a round of applause, please. And I'm just, a couple follow-up comments. I think that was an excellent presentation. Um, just keeping in mind that security is a two-way street here. Uh, with management as well as the residents doing what keeps them safe. But the one comment that sort of resonated with me when Dan Wicker was here, and I spent about five minutes with the committee at the very beginning, is that uh, our business is hospitality, right? That's what we are in business to provide. They're not a federal prison. Uh, I forget, Jeff, what did you keep asking me if they could do? I'm like, we are not doing that. Uh, because, you know, there's a fine balance between security uh, and doing everything we can to keep you safe and then also infringing on your privacy, right? So we have to balance those things. And just like the comment about the door closing slowly, it's exactly what Jeff said. It's a balance. We have to measure resident safety uh, with resident security and, and sort of make the, the best decision that balances the two of those things. So. And, and I don't want um, any, all these things are great. And I think we do have really good security measures in place. They are not foolproof, right? We do everything we can to prevent bad things from happening. But unfortunately, sometimes bad people will figure out a way to do bad things. So I think it's important for everybody to stay vigilant and do their part. We will do our part. And if you see something, say something. So if you see something that doesn't look right, even if you're not sure, um, I would always err on the side of caution and call the front desk and we will be happy to look into it. So thanks again to the residents that put the, the presentation together and we will move on to our next topic and I'm gonna call Dennis up to give a financial update. <coughs> It's going to be hard uh, following uh, Tim's presentation there. I felt like I was uh, listening to Sean Connery the whole time. <laughs> I love his voice. How are you all doing today? Everybody staying cool inside? Stay out of the heat? Um, so what I want to do is kind of cover a little bit of the financial activity that's taken place since the last time I was up here about three months ago. So I'm going to give a little bit about the last month we closed as well as the year to date. Um, and the most exciting part to talk about is uh, in terms of the, our financial information is our sales. Um, Iris and her team have been doing fantastic um, for this whole first half of the year. You know, um, as we mentioned previously in the first quarter, we not only met budget but exceeded budget. And the same has that same success has carried forward into the second um, quarter which we just finished and we um, met budget. Uh, we wanted to have 12 sales and we were able to get um, 12. So, you know, that, that means that through the first half of the year, uh, we are over budget. So that's fantastic. Um, in terms of some of the financial information with the, the uh, operating performance of the community, 
I'll kind of start with the revenues, go through expenses, and then kind of give you the um, overall uh, impact on the operating income. Um, for the month of May, we had revenues of uh, about 3.3 million. Um, we missed um, our budget by about 100,000. You know, we had an excellent, really first quarter, January through April went excellent. And so in May, we run into a little bit of headwinds and most of uh, the impact on our bottom line was um, basically due to revenues, a few er uh, areas where occupancy wasn't where we wanted it, but you know we're building it back up. Um, year to date, the net operating income uh, is a million thirty-five thousand, and that is still two hundred twenty-two thousand over budget. So year to date, things are continue to go really well. You're going to have those months here and there that kind of will sneak up on you. Um, let's see. I'm sorry, uh, the year-to-date revenue sixteen million six eighty-five, and that was that sixty-five thousand um, below what we had budgeted. In terms of our labor cost for the month of May, it was one point eight million, and that was twenty-six thousand um, over budget. Part of that was due to we had our survey um, over at Plaza West, and so we had a little additional staffing related to that. Um, also, we had some, uh, as you may know, uh, in the dining area, we've had a, a lot of new hires and there was some training and things like that that was going on. So then you have a little bit of uh, overlap with some of the, uh, the labor hours there. Um, year to date, our labor costs were 8.8 .8 million and that's about 47,000 over budget. Um, we're, we've been making a lot of our success up on with our non-labor costs for the month of May. We had 1.4 million in non-labor costs, and we that was favorably below budget by about 38,000 or 33,000. I'm sorry. And then uh, year to date, our non-labor uh, costs were 6.9 million, and that's favorably under budget by about 334,000. So if you take all that together, again, for the month of May, our net operating income was 69,000, and year-to-date net operating income is a million thirty-five, which is, again, um, about 222,000 um, better than budget. So you know, all the information I'm giving you now is for the month of May. Um, right now, we're in the middle of closing out the June financials, and um, you know, once uh, those are done, we'll have a good feel for where we were at having um, completed half of the year. Uh, but that kind of lets you know where we're at through May. Um, one other thing I wanted to pass along, um, I think the last time I was up here, it was probably right around that time that um, Sam Kirkland, uh, who is the new business office coordinator, he was, I think, had just recently been hired. So I just wanted to make sure I had mentioned that um, many of you have probably already met him uh, when you come up there to either if you have a question about your bill or you're looking to make a payment but um, you know Crystal of course is the business office manager and then Victoria used to be the uh, business office coordinator and Sam uh, replaced her when she left and so if you haven't had an opportunity to meet him come up and say hi he's um, just picked up everything really well he does he has a great attention to detail loves to uh, meet and talk with the residents. So I encourage you to, um, you know, if you have any issues, feel free to come up and uh, between Crystal and uh, Sam, they can work through those uh, issues with your bill. Um, that's about it. I look forward to reporting once we uh, get done with the next quarter. Thank you. Yeah. You know, it's, it's funny you ask that. Literally, as um, as the, Tim was doing his presentation, I walked over to Angie and I mentioned that, that very thing. Um, I, that's what I'll start doing. Um, the finance committee, which represents all of you, gets you know a, a lot of detailed information. But even for the summary information I present here, I would think that would be a great idea. So I'll, I will look to do a visual, see how that come forward. Thank you. you bet. Thanks, Dennis. And I was actually going to say the same thing. I know Dennis threw out a lot of numbers. And um, I know it's hard to kind of figure out exactly what he's saying, but we're having a really, a pretty good financial year. Um, I would not say that we are back to pre-COVID. 
um, financial performance, but we're certainly heading in that direction and we're really happy about that. Um, and I will tell you, your finance committee um, really does look at all the details and they make sure we're not skimping on our food expense, right? Um, that, so they look at all of our operating expenses and revenue and making sure that we're good stewards of your money. Um, so please know that you can always look at the minutes from those meetings and the rack pack um, that's available. So with that, I'm gonna call up Teresa and she's gonna give a dining update. Hi everyone. So I'd like to start off by saying thank you to those that are filling out um, comment cards on a nightly basis. We do have the QR codes on the tables uh, for those that have their smartphones. For those that do not, you can still go through the Rap Rep portal. And we also have kiosks right at, or a kiosk right outside of Pamela's office where you can just do a quick um, survey for your meal. It doesn't need to be lengthy. We don't need a novella every time you eat dinner. The longer it takes you to fill it out, the less likely you're gonna fill it out consistently, right? Because we're only as good as our last meal. And speaking of meals, we served over 11,400 meals in the month of June, just in IL. 11,400 meals. So the responses that we received back were from the Rap Rep portal were a little over 200. So less than 1% of your voice is being captured. But with that voice that's being captured, we are seeing an 85% um, positive uh, comments on what comes in based on the analytics that we are getting from the QR code, which is up from 78 last month, 78%. So we have increased um, things that we're seeing on the upswing is we are seeing a little bit of a better consistency from comments that we're hearing from residents. The new menu platform, Grove Menus, that we are um, moving to, uh, we're seeing a lot of the recipes are being really well received. Um, so we're getting a lot of comments in the dining room saying that, that um, overall, we're seeing that uh, a lot of positive uh, comments in the dining room on our, our meals on, on a nightly basis. So we thank you for that. Um, in the kitchen, uh, we still have some staffing hurdles. Uh, we are still using a temp agency, so we have three temps that are in working with us because we are down three cooks, which we have been. Two cooks and one sous chef. Um, we have brought in four potential candidates for sous chefs. We had a really great one last week. We really thought we, were, we had our guy, and then he decided to open his own restaurant. He was that good, too. So we were like, this is great. Um, uh, Chef Jamie has been getting out more and more into the dining room as the team is feeling more and more comfortable executing his vision in the kitchen. Um, you know, really we're just working on the building blocks, uh, hot food hot, cold food cold, uh, making sure what we have on the menu is, is that's what we're serving. Um, we're trying to, you know, change, or trying to just change that culture in the kitchen, or we are very successful in doing that, sorry. Um, we have the anniversary dinner next week. I know there's been a couple questions asked about well, what's on the menu, what's on the menu. So this year is um, in the dining room, we're kind of doing a Margaritaville theme um, for to go in part with our uh, entertainment that we're gonna be having and our beach theme out in the atrium. So we're gonna start off that night instead of with a soup, we're not doing soup that night, we're gonna do your choice of appetizers. We're gonna do a choice of conch fritters or a, an under the sea artichoke dip with crab and shrimp, so that'll be your first course. And then we're gonna, um, then we'll move on to salad, the house salad or Caribbean salad. The Caribbean salad will have mango, pineapple, mandarin oranges, red peppers, poppy seeds, sesame seeds, tortilla strips, and a honey orange vinaigrette. Entrees will be grouper tacos, so we're gonna do two flour tortillas with blackened grouper, cilantro, lime, and black magic aioli. Jerk chicken platter, chicken skewer seasoned with um, Caribbean seasoning on a bed of black beans and rice topped with mango salsa and a lime crema. And then we're gonna do a build your own burger because Cheeseburger in Paradise, Jimmy Buffett, one of his really great songs that we'll, they'll probably be playing up um, in uh, the uh, entertainment up here. We're gonna do a build your own burger. So you have a choice between two Wagyu beef sliders and sliders are just mini burgers. So you're gonna get two of those. 
a turkey burger, a vegan beyond burger, and then we have three different um, burger toppings you can choose. Uh, one being the classic cheeseburger, and then we're gonna do a pineapple spam burger. So we're gonna take a nice thin piece of spam and then you just grill that lightly and then we have the pineapple and we'll have a nice sweet glaze on it. And then we'll also do a pineapple bacon jalapeno cheddar burger for those that wanna kinda of get a little spice. We're gonna do steak fries with truffle oil and Parmesan cheese, sweet potato fries with garlic, cilantro aioli, black beans and rice, plantains, and steamed broccoli. We will also have the left side of the menu available for those that are like, this menu is too crazy, I just want a piece of salmon. So we understand that while we're going to get creative and, and, and invent like these new menus to kind of bring you to some new flavors that we need to have some things that are kind of just plain and things that we're used to if that's just not your, your uh, interest that night. Um, I think that's all I have. Uh, I look forward to the anniversary party. I think it's going to be fun. It's very casual, okay? So in the dining room, I, I, I know we have some some of you are like the dining room police with with uh, uniform, or not uniform, but yeah. dress code. So I encourage everyone to wear shorts and have fun this day, um, including our staff as well, because it is going to be a very casual, nice event. So we look forward to it. We're going to have some really fun drinks in the atrium and some appetizers out there as well. Questions? Any questions for Teresa? Yeah. <laughs> um, that's all I had on my agenda today. Does anybody have any questions for me? All right. Well, you're an easy crowd today. Thank you for coming. And we'll see you.